with her. There then you see the influence of aperture, objective aperture, on resolving power. Another factor is the influence of wavelength. I can put in here a filter, a green filter, a red filter, and you'll notice, as you saw when you were looking earlier at diffraction patterns, that the red diffracted light is further out than the green diffracted light. If we put the red filter in first and close down the diaphragm so that we have excluded almost all the red light from contributing to the image, you see that we don't resolve the lines. If we change to the green filter though, we immediately see resolution returns. No resolution in red, resolution in green. And of course from the top of the screen you can see why. The green diffracted light is closer to the zero order and so through a given opening it manages to pass through whereas the red diffracted light cannot pass through that carefully adjusted opening. If I put both colours in together there, because remember the filter is lying in a plane close to the illuminated field diaphragm and therefore conjugate with the specimen, you can see illumination in the two colours simultaneously and you can see the benefit of the shorter wavelength of the green. It's not very much shorter, but it's significantly shorter than the red. To take this to an extreme, the transmission electron microscope uses electrons whose wavelength is about a hundred thousand times smaller than the wavelength of light, and that's where the benefit of the electron microscope lies. So, in these two simple experiments in the first few minutes, we've seen the basis of Abba's equation that resolution depends on the aperture of the objective and on the wavelength of the light. We'll now go back to exploring other features about the contribution made by the diffracted beam to the image. If we just look at the fine detail here, I close down, it's quite obvious that the zero order alone with no diffracted beams gives us no resolution. I could do a silly experiment. If I open up the iris diaphragm and quite simply take the slide off the stage, we have a zero order and at the bottom we have no detail as you would obviously expect with no specimen on the stage. Put the specimen in, the diffracted beams come back and the detail in the image comes back. So there does seem to be some kind of a link between the presence of diffracted beams and the presence of lines in the image. How many of these beams do we need? You can see here that we've got the zero order, the first on the left and the first on the right, and the beginnings of the second order on the left and the right, and if I pull the iris out, in fact you see we've completely got the second orders. Do we need all of these? Clearly we need some diffracted beams, but do we need the full set? Let me close down the diaphragm like this and move it over so that we're just including one diffracted beam. Well, we don't resolve. Let's move across to include two diffracted beams. Now we do resolve. We can count the numbers of lines there. We can see what their frequency is. I know the image looks a bit funny. We'll come back to that in a minute. But we are at least resolving with two beams. And here we're resolving reasonably normally with two beams, the zero order and the first. The idea here is that the final image results from the interference between the various beams which make it up. And 
They can be the zero order and the first order beam. They can be two diffracted beams, the first and the second, or they could be other pairs of beams, um, except that my equipment won't allow me to show you that. Or, of course, more normally, it will be as many of the diffracted beams that the aperture of the objective allows to pass through. And, as we could see later, the more beams, the better, in terms of fidelity of the image. But with regard simply to being able to tell in the final image the frequency and spacings of the features in the object, then we need two beams just, either the zero order and the first order, or the first order and the second order. We see, a hint at the least, that the final image is due to interference. Um, I think that you should be able to see that from the fact that we need two beams. One beam can't interfere with itself, but two beams can, and when you have two beams present, then you do see the resolution in the final image. Let's follow that um, idea further, that the final image is due to interference. I'll dim down the light a little and put into the first focal plane of the condenser a slit, a simple slit diaphragm in place of the pinhole. And you see, as you would expect, that the diffraction pattern now consists of multiple slits rather than multiple pinholes, and they're arrayed left and right because of the um, arrangement of the lines on the object. We'll put into the second focal plane of the objective, back focal plane of the objective, another slit like that, which, as you can see, because the thing is um, swivelable, can be adjusted in its angle. The diffraction pattern that you see up there looks pretty similar to the one that you've been seeing so far from the pinhole, except that the individual beams are square rather than circular. That maybe isn't a major difference. And so if we look at the image that derives from that diffraction pattern, you can see that it is the old familiar image of a series of vertical lines. I'm going to do here a very simple experiment that has fairly deep consequences. If I do that for dramatic effect, remove the image for the moment, I'm simply going to twist the slit that's in the back focal plane of the objective with respect to the slit that lies in the first focal plane of the condenser. And we'll see what happens. There's the image. I'm now going to twist the diaphragm and you'll see that resolution in the image has disappeared. Return it to its normal position and it's come back. Twist it the other way, resolution has disappeared. So here we're losing resolution simply by twisting the slit in the back focal plane of the objective with respect to the slit in the lower focal plane of the condenser. We've got a full set of beams contributing to the image. We've got the zero order, the first on the left, and the second on the left just coming in, and the same on the right, except that it's fallen off the top of the screen. We've got a full set of beams, and yet, for some reason, they're not able to interfere. Take it back again to its normal position, and in this position, they obviously are able to interfere and give us the black lines in the image. What could be the explanation of that? Well, this could be a moment to stop for some discussion. I'll just stay silent for a few moments while we might do that. <laughs> 